Almost two years ago, I made the Bubble Rock Fountain Bowl. That was a pretty cool project. It has since been decommissioned and left to collect dust. For that build to work properly, I had to drill a hole in the bottom. Moving forward to present day, that feature must be reversed. The bowl is made from glass, so I'll patch it up with the same. I took measurements to determine what glass to use and to create a guide for the hole saw. A little hot glue allowed me to create a gasket of sorts between the pieces. This will help retain the water which keeps the hole saw from overheating. A spring clamp will keep it stationary while I drill. As usual, I'm not applying any pressure. The weight of the tool itself is doing the work. The newly created glass puck combined with a ring of silicone will plug the hole with ease. It's just a hair smaller than the diameter of the hole, so the pieces fit together perfectly. It's not quite as thick though, so I applied additional silicone to the interior. Here's the patched up vessel. For reference, it can hold up to 3.5 gallons or 13 liters. My goal is to transform this into a low tech riparian bowl using simple techniques. After going through a few ideas, utilizing driftwood seemed like the way to go. I have a nice selection of spiderwood which will allow me to achieve the desired function. As I'm scaping, the main feature I want to create is a shelf of sorts. This will be a few inches below the top of the container. Here I'll use the features of the wood to hold various plants above the water. More on that later. For now, a syngonium will help me determine if this configuration is viable. I thought it was going to work, but I had to make an adjustment. I moved the smaller piece to the bottom of the container. Now this is going to work perfectly for what I have in mind. Very simple, yet effective. As you know, substrate is always a big consideration. This build is unique because the plants will begin in a hydroponic environment. In other words, they'll grow without a substrate and obtain nutrients from the water itself. However, the roots will eventually make it down to the bottom where they can take advantage of an enriched aqua soil. I'll include it because of this and to buffer the water. It doesn't look great on its own though. I'll add fine gravel which is nearly the same grain size. I figured coarse sand would make it look even more cohesive. In my opinion, the result is something cohesive and practical. With a build like this, it's probably best to include a thick layer. After all, this is where the vast majority of beneficial bacteria will reside. Normally I wouldn't add the lighting yet, but it would be easier to plant if I do it now. I selected this mini LED light, which is attached to a bamboo tray. It seemed like the perfect option given the nature of the build. Planting this should be fairly straightforward. I've selected an array of plants which will grow well in a riparian setting, meaning their roots are immersed in water while the rest of the plant is above the rim. Anyway, I processed these ahead of time like I've shown before. I simply rinse away all of the substrate and clean the foliage. 
As long as you're gentle, the result is clean plants that are ready to go. That said, it doesn't hurt to be more thorough and run the plants through quarantine. This process is usually sufficient though. One of my favorite steps is always adding the plants. They really just bring it all together. As I work, I typically start with the large plants, like the syngonium. This makes it easier to maintain cohesive textures and scale. In this instance, I nestled the plant atop the driftwood and reworked the roots as I went. This was challenging to get right without using additional elements. I didn't expect it, but I was able to immediately nestle some of the roots in the substrate. This helped keep them steady. The remainder of the plants were much easier to include. As I added them, I adjusted the roots to help keep things anchored. The cool thing about this is that the plants will become more secure as the roots mature. While I did all of this though, I had to keep in mind where the plants were, not only from a stability perspective, but also to maximize the amount of light going down into the bowl. As you saw before, it was also a little tedious to find areas where the plants could reside. I decided that this setup would look and function better with botanicals. I boiled them first so they sink immediately. These will help naturalize the setup and provide climbing areas for the inhabitants to graze on. Amazon frog bit seemed like another great inclusion. They have really long roots which will play into the theme of this build. With all of these elements in place, I'm very pleased with the result. Obviously this looks neat, but it's also a very low maintenance solution. That's due to the power of plants. Their roots will suck nutrients from the water in order to grow. This creates a clean and stable environment, which essentially sustains itself. I can't wait to see how it progresses. Let's add the inhabitants. These are a true aquatic nano species, the Thai micro crab. They're super tiny and won't grow much bigger than this, so they're perfect for a mini setup. They enjoy climbing on and living in roots, which is why I made this setup like I did. Also, unlike many other aquatic crabs, these ones have no interest on leafing the system. So in making a low maintenance riparian build, you can simultaneously give them exactly what they want. I don't know about you, but I really like this style of setup. The roots create a neat vibe, and the crabs are a cool little critter to have around. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this, check out the video description. I've linked up some similar builds that I know you'll love. Anyway, that's all for now. I hope you all enjoyed the video and learned something new. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.